there is a forest that is older and richer than the Amazon. Even though it was discovered by Europeans centuries ago, it still keeps many of its secrets. A large number of the animals of this forest live nowhere else. Much about their lives remains cloaked in mystery. And within the forest's green embrace lies one of the wonders of the world. The Mata Atlântica stretches thousands of kilometers along the coast of Brazil, from the temperate south of the country to the tropical north. From the coast, the forest extends as far as 600 kilometers inland, creating a wide range of habitats. There are lush lowland rainforests, steep montane woodlands, and open areas of rock and grass. Over the last 500 years, much of the Mata Atlantica has been converted to pasture and farmland. But the remaining patches of forest still support extraordinary animals. Murikis are found nowhere else on Earth. They can spend their whole lives in the treetops. They share the forest with a bewildering array of other animals. It's the many habitats of the Mata Atlantica that have produced a rich variety of plants that, in turn, support a wide range of animals. A kaleidoscope of butterflies. Nearly a thousand species of birds, more than in the whole of Europe. While the murikis inhabit the canopy, other monkeys live in complex layers of branches below. Marmosets and capuchins live alongside the murikis, each adapted to their own part of this complex and varied forest. Unlike other monkeys in the forest that have hierarchies, murikis live in a more egalitarian society, where peace is maintained by much touching, hugging, and reassuring cuddling. The monkeys live in groups where the males are often related and brothers form close bonds. But the strongest bond is between mother and infant. The murikis are highly adapted for living in trees. They have long hands for grasping the branches. Their tails are prehensile able to grip like an extra hand as they move across the treetops. The band of brothers with their mothers and younger siblings live in harmony in the canopy. But why murikis are so friendly is still somewhat of a mystery, like so much in this forest.
It's not just the monkeys that are unique residents of the Mata Atlantica. Many of the forest's birds are found nowhere else. Most depend on the forest. Like the blue mannequin, it has a very different social life to the murikis. The males are splendidly colorful, whilst the female is a more modest olive. But when she arrives at a particular branch, a group of males quickly assembles. Their dance display was not good enough this time. It's the riches of the Mata Adluntica, in particular the easy availability of fruit, that allows the male mannequins to spend so many hours each day dancing. Even without a female, the local males will gather to practice their dance routines. These males are not related, and yet they work as a team. Only a coordinated effort will impress a female. Without a good team display, none of these birds will get the chance to mate. Mannequins are widespread in the Mata Adluntica, often living where the forest borders other habitats like marshes and grassland. And the forest that runs along swamp and stream is the favored habitat of the bush dog. This, one of the smallest members of the dog family, is extremely rare, and very little is known about its life. What we do know is that they are highly social, like many creatures of the Mata Adluntica. In bush dog groups, there is an alpha male and female that lead the pack. They are the only ones that breed in this society. These rare wild dogs prefer to live near water, and in particular, rivers. Much of the water that flows westwards from the forested slopes meets to form the Iguazu River. and it creates one of the greatest spectacles on Earth. The Iguazu Falls. Water from over six million hectares. Over a thousand tons per second pour over the falls. The falls stretch nearly three kilometers, and in places the water plunges over 80 meters. Yet this raging torrent is just another habitat in the forest. And fragile swifts have made the falls their home. Incredibly, they fly straight through the waterfall.
Great dusky swifts are waterfall specialists. They roost on the sheer walls alongside and behind the falls. Even with kilometers of cliff, the birds still fight over prime roosting sites. They seem to be naturally aggressive. The birds fly through the wall of water and fight for space on the sheer rocks, because here they will be safe at night. Vultures return to roost in the trees surrounding the falls. At night, the forest is not a safe place. Killers are on the prowl, patrolling the forest floor. The murikis are safe in the treetops and the swifts can sleep soundly, sheltered by the falls. The waterfall is the linchpin in the lives of the swifts, but each morning they must depart the security of their home. Like other swifts, they are aerial predators, spending the day on the wing, snatching the many insects that fly out of the forest. Coates, relatives of the raccoon, are found throughout the Mata Atlantica and far beyond. Unlike the swifts, they are opportunists. Aided by a great sense of smell, they snuffle out all kinds of insects and bugs. Coates are highly social animals. The babies are born in a nest in the treetops and when just six weeks old, they descend to join other families. There are several mothers and each one keeps an eye out for all the youngsters. Led on by their noses, the young ones are endlessly curious. In this band, the adults are all females, a supportive sisterhood, where mothers will even suckle each other's babies.
Coates are smart, but the youngsters have much to learn, including what constitutes food and what doesn't. This is when it's good to have your mother and aunties around. The Coates may live alongside the mannequins, but in reality they inhabit different worlds. While the Coates spend most of the day rummaging for food, the mannequins are free to practice. The moment of truth. A female has arrived. There is a strict hierarchy amongst the mannequins, and the alpha male is often the oldest bird. Only he has a chance of mating. The others are just the support act. So why do they dance when they have no prospect of mating? They have no choice. For a female will not mate with a lone dancer, so every male must join a group and wait his turn. It may take as long as 10 years to become top bird, and in that time, a male will have danced for thousands upon thousands of exhausting hours. The alpha male calls an end to the display. The others bow, and he goes to the mating perch. The female is not impressed. Obviously, more practice required. Back to the training ground. Females are very choosy for a reason. They do all the work of building the nest and incubating the eggs. She has dowdy plumage to reduce the chances of being seen. But the coates are adept at sniffing out a meal. And eggs are as acceptable as insects to these generalists. The male and female mannequins lead very different lives. Whilst males have to wait many years, the females start breeding when they are just one year old. They need to, for very few nesting attempts are successful. A mother with chicks is a rare sight. In the treetops, the Muriki mothers lavish care on their babies for more than two years. These monkeys are so specialized that they need never leave the canopy. It supplies everything they require. There are leaves and fruit. And when a vine flowers, there is even sweet nectar. The Murikis may be gentle creatures, but not from a plant's perspective. Its flowers are destroyed, and without them, the vine will not be able to reproduce.
The Muriki's world is not the natural paradise it might at first seem, for their forest home has been shrinking for centuries. The trees were felled to create fields for cattle and for coffee and sugarcane, those most Brazilian of crops. Even with the loss of trees, the Mata Atlântica forest that supports the mannequins and the muriquis still contains over 20,000 different kinds of plants. And that wealth of species supports vast numbers of insects, including over 2,000 different kinds of butterflies. The iridescent morpho males will patrol forest streams trying to drive off other males and attract a female. Mineral salts can be in short supply in tropical forests, but they are essential for growth. So, many species of butterfly gather at evaporating puddles along the rivers. the butterflies suck up the salty water. They concentrate the salt in their bodies and pump out the excess water. What is peculiar about this mass of butterflies is that they are all males. They will use the salts as a gift for the females when they mate. It's thought that the salts are important for the correct development of the eggs but the mystery is, why doesn't the female gather the salts herself? The salts may be important for breeding, but most butterflies feed from flowers, like this bromeliad. This is a very ancient and successful relationship. The butterfly transfers the plant's pollen and receives nectar as a reward. But butterflies have one weakness as messengers. They are fair weather flyers. When it's cloudy or rains, they have to find somewhere to shelter. As much of the Mata Atlantica is a rainforest, this can be a problem for the plants. A new messenger was needed. Hummingbirds. They are warm-blooded and can fly through the worst rainstorm. While the butterflies are grounded by bad weather, the hummingbirds get through with the pollen. The combination of sticky pollen and sugary nectar means the bird's feathers get matted and messy. But in the Mata Atlantica, there's always a stream nearby. The many hummingbirds that live in the forest are undeterred by the frequent rain.
And the bush dogs, too, live with the rain and the wet vegetation. In fact, they're almost amphibious, with little webs between their toes that help them to move over the soft, wet ground. The alpha pair mark the ownership of their piece of forest. The urine smells strongly of vinegar, and this has given the diminutive dogs their other name, vinegar hounds. The dogs are only as big as a terrier, but by working as a team, they can hunt animals like coatis. The coatis are safe from the bush dogs as long as they remain in the trees. And there is food here in the bromeliads. Unlike the murikis, the coatis can't leap across the tops of the trees. There's only one way out. Down, nose first. Now they're in real danger. For a generalist like the Coates, the Mata Adlujica is a hugely complex place. So much for the young Coates to learn about predator and prey. The many streams and rivers are the highways for the far-ranging Coates and the bush dogs. But for the Swifts, the mighty Iguazu is home. For they not only roost behind its wall of water, but make their nests there too. The narrow ledges are in great demand, and Swifts may use the same nest year after year which means new couples are forced to use less suitable locations. And some young birds seem to struggle with the basics of breeding. Older birds have the benefit of experience, but even a changeover can be aggressive for the swifts. The nests are constructed of mud and moss, which the birds gather from the waterfall itself. Nest building is a complicated business, and inexperienced birds can get things hopelessly wrong. even starting to build a nest on the back of your partner. While some swifts are getting in a real mess, construction is going well elsewhere. 
After the dirty work of nest building, the birds take a welcome wash, courtesy of the greatest power shower in the world. Feathers cleaned and spruced up, the swifts fly out to search for more insects. The breeding swifts seem unaffected by the constant roar of the falls. But nearby another creature has found a novel way to live in a noisy environment. The torrent frog. Like most frogs, he calls out to attract a mate. But when his peeps are drowned out, the male has another way of enticing a female. If you can't be heard, then a little leg wave might work. Surely irresistible to any female. Waving your legs is a great way to draw attention to yourself. But not only from frogs. The highly venomous Jararaka. If the snake comes too close, the frogs use their legs in a more conventional way. The frogs and swifts, specialized creatures that depend on the streams and cataracts, face a real threat after storms and heavy rain. The rivers fill. Seven times as much water, 10,000 tons per second, thunder over the falls. Now the location of the nest ledge becomes critical. The experienced couple are still safe. But the young pair are in trouble. The rising waters have flooded their nest. All is lost. The young birds will try again next year. For these birds, nesting is all about location. The older pair are safe and dry, even if they are still squabbling. The swifts depend on the waterfall and the surrounding forest. Luckily, even when the floods recede, there will be water enough to protect these strange and specialized birds.
The source of all this water, the montane forest, is the home of the Murikis. The great variety of trees, as many as 450 different species in a single hectare, means there is fruit to eat most of the year. The Murikis are quite safe in their treetop fortress, but even so, the presence of a jaguar causes them concern. Jaguars are powerful climbers, but no match for the Murikis. On the occasions when there is no fruit, the Murikis can eat the leaves of the Cecropia tree. For they have no toxins, unlike many of the other plants of the forest. But they are not unprotected for the Cecropia provides accommodation in its hollow stems for hordes of fierce Aztec ants. The ants attack any reckless intruders, like this black capuchin. The monkey pays a terrible price for his snack. The Murikis have a different approach. They avoid the tree and its ferocious ants. The technique is foolproof. Almost. The Murikis are so completely at home in the treetops that they even find water here. A handful of leaves acts like a sponge. Life seems easy for adult and young alike. For the other inhabitants of this multi-layered world, finding food is a more tricky business. A fallen tree holds many grubs to tempt a young Kawati. But he must be careful. For the group has disturbed a Brazilian wandering spider that was sleeping under the log. Normally nocturnal, this spider is a serious danger. For it's the most venomous in the world. Young noses must be wary. The growing Kawatis have learned another important lesson. 
Some things in the leaf litter are best left alone. And none more so than these, army ants. There may be as many as half a million ants in the swarm. They attack everything they encounter. These are the true top predators of the forest. Even the wandering spider is overpowered. Animals much larger than the ants are pinned down and then dismembered. Even those that manage to escape the ants are not safe. There are birds that are camp followers. They capture the insects that flee the swarming ants. Yet more specialized lives inside this little known forest. For part of the time, the ants are nomadic, and the workers and soldiers carry the precious larvae, the colony's next generation. After hunting all day, they construct a shelter, a bivouac, from their own bodies. This will be their shelter for the evening. The larvae are safe inside the living walls. High above the dark and dangerous forest floor, there is still a little light for the Murikis. But they too are preparing for the night. Even if a youngster still wants to play, At night, the forest is a very different place. Porcupines awake and set out in search of food. Little is known of these secretive creatures. The Mata Adlunchika is home to at least five different kinds. One species was only discovered in 2013. In the centuries since Europeans landed on Brazil's shores, the forest has continued to be cleared. Now, some of the remaining pieces are too small to support animals like the porcupines. They may become extinct before we know anything about them or their nocturnal lives. Ninety-three percent of this unique forest has been lost. The Mata Adlunchika once covered a million square kilometers. But much of the forest has been converted into grassland. Yet despite what would appear impossible pressure, the remaining patchwork of forest still supports many animals. They are benefiting from a modern movement to save what remains of the Mata at Luchica. The immense Iguazu is protected. The falls mark the boundary between Brazil and Argentina and both countries created national parks that surround the falls. Luckily for the swifts, the parks safeguard many thousands of hectares of forest 
where they can still catch insects to feed their young. The chick grows rapidly, nourished on a high protein diet. As it approaches the time to leave, to fly through the waterfall to a world it has never seen, the chick moves out of the nest and clings to the rock nearby, along with the other nestlings. Then, triggered by some stimulus we may never know, the young birds release their grip. Some instinct impels the birds, and in an instant, they transform into creatures of the air. One of the greatest threats to the remaining forest is the growth of the cities. Today, over 70% of Brazil's population lives within what was Mata Atlântica Forest. 140 million people. Brazil's towns and cities continue to expand into the forest. Blue mannequins display within earshot of the traffic. They can survive in small pockets of forest. But for a young male like this, there is an uncertain future. It will be 10 years before he will have a chance to lead his own display team. By the time he has learned from his elders and is ready to breed, the forest may no longer exist. He could be dancing into oblivion. But there is hope, for there is a determination to save what remains of this rich and unique forest. Even with just 7% left, the Mata Atlunchica is still one of the richest habitats on Earth. Mm -hmm.